Well, greetings and salutations, Series 7 test takers. This is the Series 7 guru coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas with an explication request about taxable equivalent yield. Very, very testable. I'll put this in the uh, Series 7 playlist, and I'll also put in the SIE, and I'll also put in the 65. Okay, so let's get started on this explication request. A customer is in a 27% federal tax bracket. Now, as a test taker, the minute you're on a test and they give you somebody's tax bracket, you know what is coming next. It's going to be a question about suitability about a muni bond. You know, now if they're in a lower tax bracket, it's never going to be the right answer in terms of suitability. And, you know, the higher the tax bracket, the more sense it's going to make. Now, once you see the 27%, you say, ah, I bet what's coming next is either a taxable yield and I'm going to have to figure out tax-free equivalent. In other words, what is 7% taxable worth after you pay taxes? Or tax-free, what is it worth to get uh, you know tax-free yield and not have to pay taxes? What is the equivalent to the taxable bond I would need to get that same return? So that's what's coming next as a test taker. All right, so our next thing is it's a 4.5% uh, muni bond. You should definitely know that muni bonds are federally tax-exempt. That's very testable. So if I'm collecting that 4.5% on par, that would be $45 per bond, and I'm not going to owe taxes on that. So that's bueno, right? Uh, what is the taxable equivalent yield? Again, you can't be fumbling around with certain math on your exam. You can't be fumbling around with it Series 7. Don't worry about this, your SIE. But for example, 7 you can't be fumbling around with parity. You know, remember the three types of questions you get are recognition, practical application. You can't be giving up recognition and you can't be giving up practical application. This is a practical application question. So, you know, there's not going to be a 50-50. The last question you get are judgment. You want to save your misses for judgment questions. This is not a judgment question. This is a math question. If you don't like math, you know, I'm not a big fan of math, but, you know, if you don't like math, you got to be able to do it, right? People, you know, the best, statistically, the best test takers are people who love math, or hate math, you're apathetic about math, statistically, you're not really a good test taker. You know, people love math. They love that there's only one right answer to this. I don't find that very fun. I mean, I like things there's no right answer to, like what is beauty or something like that. We have a couple of pictures of beer, we get closer to it. But uh, you can't be giving this up. Okay, so the formula, I, I was tutoring a guy who was a serious math geek, and he said, Dan, I don't need to memorize any formulas. Give me an E2, and I can solve for the third. And he passed his exam, you know, and uh, he said, Dean, they didn't ask me to do the math. They asked me for the formula. Uh, I'm not that guy. I need the formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tax for yield and I'm going to divide. Now, if you can't decide what to do on your exam, divide. And if you can't decide what to divide, take the first number of the question, divide it by the second number in the question. You know, the only time you're going to go uh, the opposite is you're going the other direction, right? So if if we were going from taxable, we would multiply to get tax-free. Here, it's tax-free. We're in taxable equivalent, so we're going to multiply. Actually, we're going to divide. So we're going to take our 4.5%, and we're going to divide by 100% minus the tax bracket. Now, in terms of order of operations, you should always do what's in the parentheses first. So we're going to take the parentheses there, and that's 73% or 0.73. We take that 0.73, and we get 6.1%. So I say to this customer, Mr. Customer, in your tax bracket of 27%, getting a 4.5% tax-free yield is the equivalent of getting 6.16 taxable. So, you know, that's what we're going to use to make this decision about whether we should buy a corporate bond or a muni bond. Now, let's look at our answer set. Now, when you're doing a practical application question, we're hoping that this answer is available to us. Uh, by the way, I could have got rid of choice A right away because it's got to be something higher than four and a half. So if I'm going from taxable to tax-free, it'll be lower because I'm going to take the taxes out. If I'm going tax-free to taxable, it'll be higher. So that can't possibly be right. So this is what our next one is. That can't possibly be right. It's got to be a number that's higher than uh, 4.5. So 50-50 now, right? It's either C or D. Oh, by the way, if my answer doesn't come up, then I got to do it again, right? So, boy, I'm hoping that last one is my answer. There we go. Ding, 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 ding. So there's our answer for how to calculate what this question asks. Now, the test taker requested this. My guess is they got bogged down in the rationale. And 
you know, the rationale isn't how you learn to do things. And I would tell you that a lot of rationales maybe do it some different way than you've done it. As long as you get the right answer, you shouldn't have needed the rationale to do this uh, question and get this answer. You know, so be careful that you're not, you know, getting confused with rationales. You know, who knows what the rationale is. That's the only thing I'm thinking. I look at the rationale. Was there a clear way to explain this to somebody? I think so. Uh, but that being said, that shouldn't have affected your ability to get the right answer in this particular scenario. So uh, remember, inch by inch, your Series 7 is a cinch. Yard by yard, your Series 7 is hard. And I will see you uh, for the next uh, weekend warrior test takers explication request. Bye-bye.